One timers, Matt and Justin here. Let's talk about the big one. I'm sure we've been waiting for this one. The Group H winners, Belgium, taking on the Group of Death runners up, the United States of America. It's the game we've been waiting for. Uh, the group we made it through the group of death. Yep. I think um, before the group, when the group was drawn, a lot of people said we had no chance. Mm-hmm. And then, and uh, I think any way to get into the group is an accomplishment. Which not only with the tough game they play, but with the travel is an accomplishment. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I really would have loved to at least draw Germany. I really wanted to beat Germany. Um, but the fact of the matter is, hey, we we did all the work we needed to against Ghana and, and Portugal, almost just, uh, just so close to beating Portugal. Um, but really, the U.S. has has done the hard work to get here. Um, and it really, it, you know, you could say it either way. It doesn't quite matter how you you know how you get to this point. The fact of the matter is, you got out of the group of death. I mean, they they. You know, look. I mean, look at Greece. You know, lost the first one three nil, then drew nil nil, but still found a way to get themselves here. The U.S. doing you know just that, doing what they needed to do uh, to to get in, and uh, here they are against a, a very talented Belgium team, but one that you know I I have this team as a dark horse coming in, but they I mean they give them credit they found a way to win all three games, but on the same token, they haven't. They just haven't looked as impressive to me as I thought they would be. They haven't taken control of any of the games. I mean, all mm-hmm. the games that they've had, this has really been in doubt. I mean, South Korea plays their, played their heart out, and all respect to South Korea, but that was really should have done pretty well. And I know there's a red card, mm-hmm. but that should have been the game that wasn't in doubt. Then, um, I, I wasn't. A lot of their, they're kind of similar to Argentina with me. I think a lot of their, a lot of their offensive play seems to be a little more individual, but not, it's, it's, it's not really, it seems like it's a team, 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 and, um, they got a couple big time players, but I, I'm not, that, I, I'm not, Tommy Trey is not that scared of, of what Belgium brings. They have some size. Um, they have, I mean, Hazard's a talented player. Yeah. Um, but, but for, uh, from, from our standpoint, from our team, I think, what I like about our team is what you see with good coaches is they're willing to do, uh, try different things and they're willing to, I don't know if second guess is the correct word, but they're willing to do things they didn't do before. Um, like playing Brad Davis, like trying to play Brad Davis, like, uh, playing Zuzki, like giving the young guy like Yedlin a chance who made a huge impact, ended up having a huge impact on that Portugal game towards the end. So I think, from a sub standpoint, the lineup, I don't think Clinton could have done much better um, with the team we've had. And it kind of, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, a, of Greg Popovich when he um, tried different lineups and he doesn't care what the media says. If Greg Popovich wants to start Matt Bonner for whatever reason, he does it. And uh, not saying that Matt Bonner's on the USA team, but uh, we he's going to try his things, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see if Alcador can come back as well. Yeah, I uh, well, really, it, it 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 kind of upsets me that Portugal game. He he honestly did every right move you could do on a substitution, and yet we, you know, Portugal still got that late goal because we took our guard down for one, uh, you know, one second too many. But yeah, I you know, we talked about it. We had a whole about ten minute discussion talking about the roster and how we didn't agree how some of those guys were on. But you know, it, he. Klinsman has used those guys in the in the right way. He has figured out a way to use them, and and that's I guess what really matters. You know, as long as Klinsman has the idea of what he needs on that roster, he gets those guys, and then he puts them in the right moment. Um, then it, you know, I guess what you can't say anything about it. The fact of the matter is, he's he's used. A lot. I've, actually, I've been kind of surprised that almost you know my brother and I were talking. He was joking around. He's like, I think, I think Klinsman's idea is he's just going to try and play every person on the roster because we, it, it, compared to most teams, I really feel like you know we've had about three different subs. Anytime we sub, it's a whole different person subbing in. It's not. It hasn't really been like you know uh, Johansson coming in every game or anything like that. But it's been like someone different, and, and that that kind of me is kind of interesting. But I, you know. Coming into this World Cup, 
when we both looked at the bracket, we were like, hey, if USA gets out of this group of death, we're going to have a tough matchup against Belgium. Um, I still think it's going to be tough, but I, I don't see any reason on the flip side why we can't beat Belgium, in all honesty, because, like, like you said, it, they have taken... They've taken a while to figure out how to break down defensive teams. I think we play pretty well defensively, as it's, as it's shown. You know, um, obviously we have our moments where, but the fact that it took Germany 55 minutes to to break us down that makes me feel a bit more excited about this. Um, I think we'll play very well defensively. I think we can hold them late, and and what I think we can maybe do is um, no disrespect to any other team, but I think we have a better offensive unit than Russia, Korea Republic, and. Algeria, and I think we could probably possibly score one or two on them in that time it's taking them to figure us out. Well, we got to be worried. We got to be worried about their counter because they're very good. Obviously, um, Hazard and Fellini and and those guys um, are going to be tough. It's going to be tough to get one one or two past uh, Courtois. But I think, I mean, this is one of those those games. I I'm I feel confident going in that the USA has a good shot at winning. I think we're definitely. Match, I think it's definitely an even, you know, I just pretty even matchup. The thing that worries me the most is uh, they have some, some big guys. Uh, Bellini is an animal with the yeah. Afro, he's a big guy there. Company, is a, he scares me a little bit. I don't want to <laughs> look at him in the alley. In the alley. Yeah. Uh, I know he, I, I just thought that he's a little bit in, he might be in doubt for the game, but, um, I mean, me personally, if my leg was hanging on my thread, I would still try to play if it was a World Cup game. So I doubt, you know, I, I, I'm pretty, I'm assuming he'll play. Um, and as far as our team is concerned, I think, you look at the last game, I think Omar Gonzalez played, played as well as you can have, could have expected. Yeah. He seemed to deal with crosses a lot better. Um, not to put blame on anybody, but it seems like that, that, that heartbreaking goal against Portugal, um, I know a lot of the basic kind of people that don't, not the basic, but people that don't watch a ton of soccer, a lot of people blame Michael Bradley for that turnover. Mm-hmm. Like this Portugal that sent him on the counter, but we were so well set up to defend any type of attack. I think we had about five guys behind the, five or seven guys behind the ball when that turnover, when that turnover happened. Mm-hmm. If that, that turnover happened, we still shouldn't be ready to defend. I think it was like, a, they had about three or four Portugal attackers going against five or six American defenders, so there should be no issue defending any kind of ball. And with that kind of Corilla, I mean, the cross from Ronaldo couldn't have been any better. Um, but you can't let a guy get a free header like that. I don't, right. care, if, I don't care if Jeff Cameron can't just watch, can't watch the ball like that. You got to stand your man or attack the ball one or the other. So I think that's one of the reasons. And Omar Gonzalez seems to be one of the better guys in the air. And with that being said, it seems like this company and Fellini, those kind of guys that are so talented in the air and big, strong guys, I think Omar Gonzalez should definitely start. And I think, I, I, I don't, it's a tough decision. I don't know what you should do. Brad Davis, I'm a big fan of his. I, don't, I think he's going to have a tough game. He has a tough time against uh, Germany. Uh, he's going to switch sides with his I think. I'm not sure. If, I don't know if you, I don't know if you start him again. I, I think you might want to play Bedoya. Bedoya is pretty solid. Yeah. He doesn't do. He hasn't been playing great, but he's a solid. He's a solid. He's been getting back. Boy, he works hard. So I think I think you might go back to Bedoya and Dempsey and Dempsey. And I think you look for this game. If this game is if this game tied, or we need to just get behind or tied, and we need a goal. I think. You might be seeing Alcador come in with about 30 minutes left, 30, 20 minutes. And I think he'd come in for a, come in for a Bedoya or come in for a, a Jermaine Jones or a Beckerman. And hopefully that would be the type of spark that could ignite, could ignite the team if we needed a goal. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, just going back to that Portugal game, I the the thing that really gets me, obviously Bradley had that turnover. But at the same time, we had half of our team was up in Portugal's half. Um, for just basically try for a time wasting maneuver. I don't. I do not understand that. We only need about one to two guys to just go to the corner and hold the ball. 
but yet we had half of our team up there waiting for a pass, and then we lose it, so now it's switched back. We only have half our team back to defending. Um, you know, we gave way too much space to Ronaldo, you know, one of the best players in the world. Gave him so much space to pick out the right pass, and then, yeah, I was like four dudes ball watching. No one communicated that, um, I think it was uh, Valrella was just streaking in, and you couldn't, that was a textbook header. I mean, that was a textbook play. You couldn't get any better than that. Um, so, you know, obviously just going on to that, we that was just a lapse in, in just thinking, I think, for a lot of guys. Um, but going going into this game, I, I, I think I agree with you on um, Gonzalez. Uh, um, Beasler and, and Cameron have both played pretty well together, but Beasler and, and Gonzalez, have, you know, they played all the qualifiers together. So those two, I think, know each other much better, um, communicating-wise and everything like that. So I, I agree with uh, Gonzalez coming in, especially because – for just coming back off an of injury, he only had a few. He only played about what, like 15, 10, 15 minutes against uh, Portugal, but he looked fantastic against Germany. Um, I think Bedoya should probably come in for Brad Davis um, in this game, and I think we play that same four-two-three-one uh, format and just have Clint up top roaming around and have everyone else back behind the ball be organized and and try and keep that frustration up for Belgium and hopefully we can maybe grab one uh before that point before they're able to, to figure out how to break us down I, I wonder Jake, if, if you've said we've played everybody up one of the players we have I think I wonder if you want to see a, a mixed disgruntled come in for Bradley if he's struggling again uh I know Clinton has kind of said he's unhappy with Bradley but we haven't really seen quite that Michael Bradley has been expecting. And then, I think Jimmy Chandler is the only other player I can put on the field, but it hasn't played yet, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Julian can, Green. Uh, Julian Green as well. And Julian, Julian Green, I mean, why not throw him out there? Uh, no one knows what he's going to do. But anyway, uh, I think this is, uh, I, I think you really need a guy who can play right behind outdoor and North Dempsey and supply him with good passing, connecting from the, ca- the counter. Um, a guy like one of my favorite players, Benny Kilhaber, uh, he's a little, he's not quite as physical as Valley, and not quite, um, and not quite as big and, um, good at the fight that defense, but I think, um, there's a possible mix, this mix, this group, uh, appearance could be warranted, but I don't, uh, if Bradley struggled again, uh, um, that's something I could see happening, but I don't know if Clinton will go that far, but he's been a guilty man so far. Oh, I couldn't. I wouldn't be that surprised. I think. I, I think the U.S. finds a way to do it. I think we. I think. It's, I think. Brogan will get one goal. A goal. Or, a goal off a corner kick or a header. Um, if they are able to push the big fellows forward. But I think. I think Dempsey has been. The, the look in his eyes, determination is unbelievable. I think he's been. He's been. A, he's been absolutely big time. Alfredor, I think, might come in no matter what. Towards the end of the game, I think we'll find a way to win two one, and uh, it, it, it'll it'll be beautiful. I agree. I think I think we have. Um, a, a, a good opportunity here to, to win this game and, and get back to the quarterfinals for the first time since uh, 2002. So, um, you know, it, it's true. It's I, I I could possibly see a mixed disc group coming in. That you know, Klinsman is. Not really been uh, too. He's been pretty unpredictable and and who's going to be playing. So I, I think that keeps uh, an edge on some teams that we play just because they're you're not all you know. Sure, we played this lineup last time, but we very well could not play that lineup at all. Um, and the next time coming, and I I do think that the United States uh, could could get a win here. That's gonna be glorious. I hope. I hope the like team will stop for watching. It's unfortunate. The game is during a Tuesday work day, uh, but it's tough for most people to watch. But um, I, I hope this. I hope it's uh, a team. No matter what, you can say the team is playing hard. Uh, it's, it really seems like the American spirit is embodied when one guy falls in step, one guy comes in, another guy steps off the field and picks up right where they came off. And it's it's been an amazing it's been an amazing thing so far. Let's hope that. Uh, when we're doing our next po- our next podcast after the knockout stage, we're able to talk about the team again. Uh, let's see who the heroes are. I think one of the things that's going to be before the tournament, I think most opponents said that the most important player to our team was Michael Bradley. But he is 
not quite playing up to his own standards, and he's why I think he's going to do that um, publicly. And the guys have been the heroes. you got John Brooks had a big time goal. Yeah. Uh, this has been pretty, this has had some good moments. Uh, Danny and Johnson have been unbelievable. Beasley has been better than what I expected. Um, and then Dempsey has been big time. And, and then Beckerman and Jones have been absolutely unbelievable. And that Jones had problems. And I, I, I tried, I tweeted Taylor Schwalman to see what he thought, but Jones, in my, in my, what I know and I've seen from U.S. World Cup games, I think that's probably one of the best goals, one of the best goals we've ever had. Uh, it was unbelievable, and it wasn't a big time game when he did it. So, it was, hopefully my old Valley comes to play. And that'd, be, that'd be great, because he has a little team to play with us in these yeah, I I hope so too, and I, and I do agree with that uh, Jermaine Jones goal because a lot of the American goals have just been, um, you know, just kind of things develop the right way and you just kind of tap it in, but that was just Jermaine Jones really making something out of nothing, and that was a, a, a pretty extraordinary goal, and I, I do think that uh, could very well be up there as one of the uh, top goals um, ever in, in United States uh, soccer. Yeah, 